sinner. And you're crazy. That's what we do for you. Thank you. One more. Good morning, sir. Okay, Vic, I want to get your speech. <laughs> okay, we've got one more minute, then I will go ahead and uh, get started. We now have a quorum in the schoolhouse. Is Jerry going to make it today? Jerry is not. Oh. Okay. Called out of school. <laughs> Vic, hold it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Condolences to you, Vic. I hope you're feeling fine. Thanks, Dale. Slowly but surely. Is this your first? Yeah, I went to uh, Scandinavia. What could be a safer place? My wife and I. Came back the next day and both of us ended up with COVID. Nobody was wearing masks anywhere in Scandinavia. Well, we'll be listening when Vic speaks up. That's the <laughs> Okay, good morning, and I'm going to ask anybody on the panel when you when you do speak, please speak into the microphone so people out in the viewing audience, which we have several this morning, can hear us. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Let's do a quick roll call. Uh, Randy True. Present. Robert Young. Present. Bud Trapp. Present. Vic, I see you not in person, but on online. Present. Uh, Jerry Sheffrin is absent. Ray Rothrock. Yes, sir. Here. Chris is not here. Marianne Thunder. Present. Present. Lynn Eisberg is missing, and I am here. So now having a forum, we're going to move on to oral communication. Uh, first of all, I want to say another thank you to Dave Howes, who has retired after many, many years. Um, he retired and found his own replacement, so we now have Craig Huber, who <laughs> has joined us, uh, fully approved by the town council. And please, we welcome him aboard for his participation. Uh, thank you. Um, I also want to say welcome to uh, Tom Cherry, the new fire chief of Woodside Fire. Uh, looks like he's online. So. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you. 
Please, pleased to have your participation and look forward to continued uh, coordination with the Woodside Fire. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, any other oral communication from panel yeah. or? I have a question to, for Craig. Craig, could you just uh, clarify with the meetings, is Zoom legally required to have? with us during the committee meeting. Oh, here you go. I mean, my understanding is it's not legally required, um, but it's current town policy until we get policy in place for committees and Zooms, which is part of this new committee of committees is trying to work out that sort of structure. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Stand by for more. <laughs> That's right. I mean, <laughs> someone, the answer is it's, it's not legally required. Um, but it's past it. But, but it is the current policy. Okay. Thank you for that. Anything else? Any other questions out in the audience? Panelists and oral communications. Okay, we're gonna move on to review and approval of minutes. The minutes were attached from our special meeting of June 13th, 2023. Do I have a motion for approval? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Approved as written. Okay, town report and Howard is here this morning. Yay. Would you Yay. like to? Speak, Howard, or uh, I did circulate the email you sent me to <clears throat> everybody on the committee yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you probably have to speak into yeah, we'll that up there. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. So, uh, what is the first item on the uh, that you want to report about? Is this the backup? Yeah. Internet. So, um, <clears throat> this is something I signed. That, that we're working on. I know Corey Stocker, our assistant uh, town manager is working on it. I know we're working, looking at uh, the AT&T fiber as I reported before. I know that the, the uh, committee asked us to also look into the uh, satellite phone also, which we are doing. So uh, I know that right now, uh, Corey is looking, essentially we uh, hired assistant, I mean a, a town clerk, and that's what she's trading for her right now as uh, one of the hot items. But I just want to let the community know that we are working on it. So we are working into, so right now the secondary, right now the, the current service is with Comcast. Uh, we, we're, we're basically looking at to getting voice over IP phones right now. But what we're looking at is AT&T fiber and then some satellite. So more to come on that. Thank you. Next item is the AM radio relocation back to town center. Yes, thank you. So um, uh, number one, thank you, Ray, for sending the information concerning uh, uh, radio wave information that we're looking for. Uh, I think to sum it all up, it indicates that uh, uh, the documentation indicates that outside of three feet, that it should be safe. Um, so I, we, we are digesting that and I'm going to bring it to the building department and then the rest of the line, introduce it to the rest of the line staff is the plan right now. Uh, I know it is a slow process. We apologize for that. And thank you, Ray, for hosting the antenna at his, uh, at the location there. Um, but it, it does take time and it's basically introducing it to the staff right now. Um, it's a little slower than I anticipated, but thank you for the information as we digest it and, and send it over to staff. Uh, we'll report back. Uh, in the meantime, I know that uh, in talking to Ray, <clears throat> the tree has grown around the antenna that we have at the uh, town hall there, and we plan to trim that. So uh, that is all for the antenna. Do you have any sort of ETA? We'd kind of like to get this moved. Um, I don't right now. I mean, I'd like to get it done in the next couple months right here. Um, it's just that there are so many priorities 
you know, and not and once again, not as the excuse, but the reality is, is that you know, with a smaller staff, we've been essentially working on, but but budget, share of contracts, you know, and a lot of the events that happened here too, and at the end of the fiscal year, we were just hiring contractors to mow on the side of our roads and our trails. So, um, trying to wrap a lot of that work. So, um, it's just something that's taking time. Maybe, maybe Craig or liaison could help with the priorities here because we'd certainly like to get this done in the next 60 days. Craig, do you think that's possible? Through the chair, uh, yeah. Craig or Howard, is, is there documentation of the staff's priorities either by individual or department? And then, then also, is there reporting on how they spend their time on a even on an aggregate basis, say over a month? I think that would be really helpful for both town residents and the committees to understand. Um, and I, I understand there's been short staffing and there's a new manager that's that's being hired, but I would, you know, I think just in, in terms of managing the priorities, like for us, we would like to understand where any asks from our committee, especially important ones, fall into into priorities and, and seeing that in a you know, documented way. Can I try answering that? Um, yeah. So uh, we we don't. I mean, the town staff, as it's developed, is really to handle operations, and you know we we we're issuing permits, we're mowing, we're we're working on fields, we're holding lots of events here. I mean, uh, I'll give you an instance in public works. We're relatively the same size as you know, ten years ago, and we had a lot of events here. So that, that's what we kind of ended up focusing on also, just events and just uh, daily operations. I know the uh, building planning department, they worked on a lot of housing element stuff. And then also we're, we're still concentrating on issuing permits too uh, and development review. So we don't have, I know maybe in other larger cities, they have a lot of the procedures written and a lot of staff concentrated on, on that. Well, our focus has really been just on their operation. Do, do you use pro any project management software or any, any ticketing systems? You know, so are the project management software? I'm not aware of other departments using that. I mean, we have permitting software uh, in Intergov, and then we also have the PV Connect, uh, which is our ticketing system for public works and other items too. I, I know, you know, off the top of my head, I think it's 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 I think it's almost 30, 30 tickets a month or something like that that we're handling. So um, it it is it is a is it is a lot for a smaller staff. But to answer your question, we don't we don't have lists. It's basically almost just their their operations, and that's just uh, that's just my initial thoughts right now. Without okay. looking deep into other departments, but it's just their branch operations. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, Howard, is the uh, backup power on the wireless base station. And as I do the poor thing, you don't have a real easy way of contacting them. Yeah, so that's going to take time because the people that pull the permits are typically that build cell sites are contractors. And then the contractors sub it out to the people that pull the permits. And that's all the contacts that we have. So, um, We'll have to dig a little deeper. The thing to do maybe is go out to each cell site, find out each where each cell site is, and take the phone number off and call them. Um, one of the things <clears throat> that I'd like to look at doing is this is not a state, it's, it's not a town requirement, it's a state requirement. So who's enforcing that? And this is to find out 
who at the state is enforcing it and contact that person and then asking them, you know, how are you enforcing this? Uh, it's kind of like an elevator, to, you know, ele having an elevator. We have a little dumb waiter at our town hall and the state comes and inspects it. And that's off the top of my head going, well, you know, ultimately the state is the people that are enforcing the law and, then, and, and wrote that law. So um, but our slow method is going to be researching and keep, you know, finding lists and calling. Just, just as a point of clarification, in the past, I know that Jeremy, each year I asked him to check and he had the phone numbers. I don't know where he had them and where he got them, but he had contacts with the wireless providers in town and, you know, verified that they brought in generators before the last, uh, the last fire season. So I don't know whether you still have those or whether we have to do this sort of circuitous route, but somewhere in the system are, are oh, but I think we're spending too much time on this. So we'll just, yeah. Uh, Howard, would it help if uh, a town resident volunteered to get the phone numbers and to phone the people and find the people who are have this or who don't have it, and then maybe they could phone the state? Yes, it would help us tremendously. Okay. Anybody on this committee want to take on that path? Not me for this one, but I'll see if I can find somebody. Okay. We'll, we'll put that on our agenda, see if we can find somebody to support it. Okay, and the last item on, unless you have anything else, Howard, is that it? No, I think I just wanted to let everyone know the, the, the other things that we're doing. I mean, we, we put in the budget, uh, the council adopted a budget that continued the fire mitigation program. And this is to have, you know, it, it, it is a decreased amount because we are on a tight budget this year. Um, we have, we're funding the fire mitigation crew for either one to two days a week, um, continuing our right of way work. Uh, and this is in addition to the right of way work we're already doing with our own crew of two. Uh, so uh, that's a tremendous help. There is some, a little money in there for clearing the lots that uh, we have. It's not much, but. Uh, we work with the fire marshal to identify what's needed to be done on those lots. Um, so that's one. Uh, one. One exciting thing that I thought was great that happened last month uh, is we removed three huge eucalyptus trees. Actually, Denise and Nia and FireSafe found $30,000 worth of uh, grants to help the town remove it, those three trees. So that was $30,000 of, I, I see it as free work. So once again, it's thank you, Denise and Nia and FireSafe. Um, we removed the eucalyptus tree at the top of Peak and Cervantes uh, at our own cost. So uh, just want to let the committee know that, that that physical work was done. Uh, and of course, we try to finish up before the end of the fiscal year on mowing. So we finished all of our trail mowing, uh, 33 miles of it. Uh, we finished all the main arterials, uh, Patola Alpine, Los Trancos, Upper Alpine also. Uh, earlier earlier than we anticipate, because I know that the rules coming down from the fire department is that we have to uh, eventually mow a finish mowing a month earlier. So, and then we also mow all of our open space too to prepare for the fire season. So that's what we've done so far for uh, fire, kind of fire related work. Are there any questions concerning? Yeah, I, I had a question. Um... We, we have this comprehensive list of target hazard trees in the right of way. Is there, has there been any money allocated in the coming fiscal year to do any of, to take down any of these target hazard trees? No. And, I, you know, we have, we, we have, I've seen your list. Uh, we, we have a list that the fire department made almost a year ago. It was, uh, Danny, Scott, and Don that went over the list of targeted trees. And I know the eucalyptus we recently removed was on that list too. And it was on your list also. But uh, I mean, we're, we're running on a tight year. I think what we have in the uh, budget that the council adopted is um, a portion of a grant writer. Um, 
to help to help look for grants. And I think this is something that we're working with uh, Don Bullard on, the fire marshal, is uh, we budgeted for one third of a, a, a grant writer to share with Woodside and the fire marshal. And, but we're trying to dial in, we're gonna have to dial in on the scope of, of work on that, on what that consists of. We'll try to help get funds, just like at FireSafe, to help us remove trees from the right of way. Uh, once again, because we're on a tight year, to try to fund, find funds even to continue with the fire mitigation program that we have, because that, that program costs us between 150,000 and 200,000 a year. That program was a, started three years ago, as you know, and it's to clear the whole entire right of way on certain streets. And we started with the major evacuation routes, Alpine and Petrola, and anything that had an emergency gate to it. And now we're working out to uh, Golden Oaks right now and Los Trancos. And you know, at the very beginning of the project, as fast as we were moving, we looked at basically doing the you know 109 streets in about eight years. Yeah, actually, I had a question for the um, for Tom. Um, Tom, do you do you recall? I, I think I believe um, Woodside. Can, can you? Yeah, uh, Woodside had the same sort of list of the um, target hazard trees, um, and I understand they have all been removed. Has that been fully funded from the town, or was there money from the fire department? Do you know? I'm, I'm not sure how that was funded. I, I know they have been working on tree removal, but I, I'm not sure about the target list they're, they're working on or how it was funded. I'd have to find out more about that. Okay, thank you. Because yeah. it's just, I understand the money. I understand, and it's a lot of money. Um, but these trees are on our evacuation routes, and they will be like fireballs that, that <laughs> in worst case scenario, will keep the residents in. And this is just something we push down the road every year, and it's a real concern. So, I mean, the eucalyptus are big, and I think, I mean, they're almost between five and $10,000 to remove each of these trees. And I think there should be, and I don't know if there has, a push or some kind of newsletter or some kind of information to everyone to, encourage everyone to remove eucalyptus trees and also that when they're small saplings to remove them. And I don't know what the committee do to help us or in cooperation with the conservation committee to get the word out before these things get big, big. I mean, because they grow very fast. We've cut, we've cut big trees down and they've re-sprouted in a matter of three or four or five years or 20 feet high again. So maybe the committee can help assist with just shooting out something on the newsletter or, uh, or our other social media uh, channels to, you know, just a quick couple of sentences. We encourage you to remove your eucalyptus. No, no, I, I'm talking about the public, public right of way. I'm not talking about the private land. I'm talking about the public right of way. That's the target has at least. So we, we budget roughly about, if I, off the top of my head, $60,000 to do right of way trees. That's everything. Uh, that's that's any calls for the next 12 months on fallen trees, broken branches, branches that are leaning on poles, and so on. And every year, I recall, we use that up just on a normal, normal basis. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I understand, and I don't want to keep too much time, but I think it's really important that the town understand, that the people in town understand. Mm -hmm. um, you are doing, you are not climbing, you are not taking down the the other than those two or three eucalyptus trees. And there is a comprehensive list of those, what the fire department calls target hazard trees. Mm -hmm. And they are in the public right of way. And I think they need a total of a million dollars or something to, to be removed. And it's just something we all know and we kick down the road every year. That's just, I just want to put this on the record. I hear what you're saying, and I think you should probably talk to, the, I mean, probably the first step is the council liaison, uh, that this is a concern, and to what degree of it is a concern, uh, and how are we going to prioritize, and how, most importantly, how are we going to fund this? If you, you know, each of these things are $10,000, and you look at a million dollars, right now, we're because of the sheriff contract, uh, 
um, the sheriff contract is $800,000 more this year. Our, you know, our reserves are 1.5 or, or around, you know, so we, we don't have the funds to, to do that. And so what do we do? I mean, we could look at some kind of revenue enhancement, um, you know, revenue enhancement to discuss, maybe a discussion of revenue enhancement to start that discussion for removal of trees in the right of way that are identified. Yeah, and I think like Howard mentioned also about uh, looking up for grant funding is gonna be huge in getting a lot of this work done. Cause you know, we've seen that the county's put up, uh, you guys are all aware of that highway 35 grant that's currently going on right now up on Skyline and started at Page Mill. We have, you know, our hand in that as well. Um, looking at grants, I mean, that was like, a, I think a th almost a $3 million grant that the county got and they're making great progress. I don't know if anybody's seen, seen the work going on, but uh, that's working out well, but yeah. Just getting back to it, grant funding is going to help us out because we don't have a lot of money for that and we need to prioritize that. Okay, thank you, Howard. Thank you. Okay. We have one other item on the list. This is our liaison, and this is uh, AM radio signs. So I would just add to that last piece. Um, that the council's, you know, going to continue to work on the budget, and you know, we will have a revised budget probably in October. So I think that's the other thing is that you know we can join join in that conversation, I mean, you know, as a committee. Because as, as Howard says, you know, it's going to be a combination of do we look for additional revenue? Do we find other things to cut? Because um, yeah, at the end of the day, it comes down to money. So that's sort of the simple part of it. Um, so on the AM radio, so I finally ran the mayor down. Um, so um, what we need is from the committee an actual proposal, specific proposal, because um, you sent me some examples before, which I shared with the mayor. Um, so a proposal, um, give that to me, I'll share it with the mayor. It will go to the planning department, which will go to ASCC. Um, ASCC will discuss it and then we'll make a recommendation to council. That's the process. I mean, putting up a sign at the borders of the town is a big deal. And so it's gonna be a somewhat, in my mind, laborious process, but that's kind of what was discussed. So I think the next step is to actually have a specific proposal from you guys. What do you want a little hand scribble drawing of what we want? I think anything you think um, you want to present to ASCC to try to get approval on it. So if you do a hand scribble um, and you think that's enough, then that's fine. I, I personally would do more than that. Um, I think you want to probably write a cover letter which justifies it. And then I think you want to, you know, put some examples of maybe a couple of different signs and, you know, the reason why, because at the end of the day, ASCC is going to review this. You're going to want to treat them as a reviewing body. So can I just ask a question? So sure. you want us to make a recommendation for the exact sign, even though we gave you samples where to pick one? Yeah, you know? yeah I think that, I mean, you and maybe put a secondary one, but at the end of the day, you're going to go to ASCC they're going to want to make a decision. So you're going to want to give them something to decide on. Fine. So yeah. you, you want us to give you a picture of the sign we would desire. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. that you're trying to get approved. Yeah. Well, and, and I, Ray Allison says, I would write a cover letter to go with it. And, and sort of the justification, which, you know, in, in some ways it's like in the evacuation plan, some of that's there. Right. So, I mean, again, the goal is to get it to ASCC. So, you know, that, Commission can look at it um, and then make a recommendation to council. Okay. But going back to the uh, question about the trees along the right of way, just a, a few years ago, we talked, they talked about making donations to the town for different projects. Why don't we try to develop a, uh, a fund where town residents donate to provide our right of way insurance? We have people in town who have money and enough to own their houses <laughs> and, and share their own land. But, but, you know, it is a common good. Uh, is, is there no interest in the town for the common good? So is that something the committee could take on is to try to Actually, see? Actually, that, that's, I just wanted to add something to that. It's a really interesting uh, thought um, because on the conservation committee side, there is the same sort of thought. Our budget has been cut significantly and we don't really know where, how to finance 
um, uh, to, to keep um, um, spring down, have the maintenance money for spring down, which is in itself $35,000. So this is something with all these budget cuts that will come up in different committees. And then it, it, you could probably, you could say fire is a, a primary priority, but I think this is something, this is going to come up and maybe this is a real good idea. And, you know, f first, <laughs> first one in um, <laughs> might get the money from the, from the residents. But yeah, this is something certainly we might want to think about. Uh, isn't, sometimes you get matching funds if you, you already have funds, you get matching funds from the government or when you go out to get grants, would that be easier to get grants if you have matching funds? Yeah, so I think if you guys are interested and you should pursue it, see if there's an appetite. Because I've certainly heard people say, oh, we're willing to donate. And then it's like, we'll donate $1,000. If that's the level of donation you're talking about, you're talking about a lot of residents donating to make progress. Um, whereas if you think you can find some big donors and this is their particular interest and they want to donate to it, um, I think that's fine. In terms of public money, I mean, that's what the council does is they prioritize across all these different things. And that's what makes it tough because we don't have enough money. And so, yeah, do we cut off conservation and just spend it on fire safety? I mean, the council decided not to do that. We could have, but that's not the, the way that sort of we approach that. But I think on the private side, I, yeah, I think if you can find some, you think some big donors that could make an impact, we've got the things set up. I think it's PD Cares is the name of the program. Um, for basically taking in funds um, and earmarking them for particular tasks. So that's actually interesting because the question went through my mind. So we as a committee are legally allowed to do a fundraise, fundraising drive or, or something like that. That's legally permitted. Well, I'm not sure you do. I think you, if you as a committee want to go around and ask residents if they're willing to chip in money, I think you can do that. That's... If, if that's what you're calling fundraising, then I, yes, I believe. No, or a do. simple, maybe we'd, we would have an event. It's just because the legal question went to my mind. Let's say we have an event with the fire department and we have a fire truck there and the kids can ride on the fire truck, what, whatever, you know, like a little bit blues and barbecue. Remember, there was a fire truck. So legally, this is a permissible, permissible action to be done by a town committee. That, that's all I okay. want to clarify. I, I feel like you're asking different. So there's two different what Bud said was, could we get some residents? So if you guys want to go and talk to your friends and neighbors. No, and not, no, no, just hear me out. So no, that's, that's not what we're so talking. Let, yeah, but let me finish the sentence. So that's what I heard from Bud. What I'm hearing from you is, can we create an activity? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's just an activity that needs to get approved. Um, but if we can get it approved, then, yeah, we can do it legally. But that's, that's different. I don't think an activity is going to raise that much. Well, money. whatever it is. It's having kids sitting in the fire truck is not going to raise money for very much money. Right. I, I think you're talking about, you, you both have two different ideas, which is fine. I, but that, I, I think these are interconnected and I think connected, yeah. connected to the comments that, that I, I made. And I wasn't trying to be overly critical, Howard, about um, you know, the, 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 the need for organization and documentation of priorities because there could be enthusiasm and funding for projects if we knew there was support from council and staff. But there again, the pro, if the projects are scoped, and, and then we can understand what the blockers are. And if the blocker is purely money and, and the staff would allocate and would prioritize execution of the project, then we need to know that. And, and, the, and that's where the documentation of, of the projects of priorities and coordination between council's decision, staff time and staff priorities, and then committee priorities. So I mean, look, we, we, I think, could probably improve our organization and, and our, um, prioritization and scoping of projects related to us. But I think having that flow from the top, from the council, from the staff would be really, is, would be the important part in order for our efforts to then bear fruit. Yeah, so it's an interesting question is, could we come up with a list of all the things in the town and rank order them? I'm not sure whether we could do that. Um, it tends to get distributed, but it'd be an interesting conversation to to try to think through. I mean, clearly safety is highest priority in the town, but that doesn't make it the only priority. And that's what makes, you know, that's what always makes these decisions tough, yeah. right? So. Yeah, I was to just clarify, I was more thinking, remember when we did the fundraising for the town center, mm -hmm. 
I was more thinking along those lines because we're talking about a lot of money. Um, and if we're allowed to do something like that, we can you know, discuss this in committee and there might be traction. I would be doing work. I would be prepared to do something like that. So if there is traction, we can think about it. I, I think, Marianne, would you like to take this on? Have a conversation. As, as long as there will be help. I'm not, this is not something one, com yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Let's do a subcommittee, the three of us. Okay, perfect. Ray, any, Ray, would you be interested? Would that interest you to have a, sub no, okay. But just have a quick conversation, maybe talk to the town, talk to the town attorney, see where we can go. This might come up in the town discussions of, you know, alternative revenue sources also the next budget okay thank you Marianne okay and uh, now we're going to move on quickly to our uh, fire department and cert report all right well good morning again everybody uh Tom and Sherry here um yeah, as you guys know, uh, Chief Leonard retired as of June 22nd, last uh, couple of weeks ago. So I took over after that. Um, again, like like I said, happy to be here. Uh, look forward to working with everybody. Uh, next time, I'll try to make it in, in person. Um, I know it's kind of important you guys were talking about, you know, Zoom is mandatory or not. But yeah, I, I'd like to come in person. I got another meeting I got to jump on at nine o'clock. So I'm going to have to uh, leave pretty soon. But anyways, uh, as far as like the district happenings, um, so far, uh, as you guys can see, the, the cooler weather, I mean, we had a couple of days of hot weather, but uh, it's kind of cooled down. We have that coastal influence, which is great for us, um, keeping it cool. It's kind of delaying the uh, the heat of the fire season. Um, as far as us as the district, we're still continuing to do a lot of wildland training. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, we had a drill last week that I participated with about seven of our staff members in the drill. Uh, was hosted by Department of Emergency okay. Management through a, a grant they got for the county. It was like a $50,000 grant to host these three drills. And part of it, one of the drill selection was a virtual tabletop wildland fire evacuation drill. Um, and they picked Portola Valley to do it. So they reached out to us. That was based mostly on with, with fire, um, with the heavy presence of evacuation, uh, you know, fire tech and evacuation. It was led by a company called Constant Associates. They were the one that organized the drill. Um, DEM was a big participant. We had DEM, the sheriff's office, um, our fire staff, public safety communications, Zone Haven, large animal rescue group. And again, the focus was on early evacuation warning and uh, aggressive fire attack. Uh, basically what we did was a tabletop Zoom style meeting with people from everywhere throughout the area. And we use the Zone Haven platform to, you know, have a fire start in a certain area, you know, through Zone Haven, they have some training modules in there where you can actually start a scenario and have it progress based on time, uh, topography, wind, and, and um, you know, uh, time of the year, whatever you want to put into it, it'll create a fire that progresses. So we had a fire basically progress over a seven hour period. And what that looked like as far as our evacuations, our messaging, um, the use of, you know, connecting with the towns, you know, we, this was all a lot of just a bunch of verbal um, communication, you know, brainstorming, and it was a really good drill. Um, I think everybody took a lot away from it, you know, getting the different players involved, for, uh, unified command, you know, reaching out to other counties, draw down for our county as far as resources and reaching out for strike teams to other areas. So it was a, it was a really good drill. Um, it was nice that that we got the grant to do it because the facilitators uh, did an excellent job. They also did another drill, a tsunami drill on the coast and a flooding uh, style drill in San Mateo Foster City. So that was great. We're going to do a roundtable uh, discussion about it here in a couple of weeks uh, just to see where, where we kind of fall into that scenario. And it was nice. We presented them with a bunch of policies that we currently use and uh, they do some comparisons to what other people have out there. So more to follow up from that. Um, as far as our stations go, our stations are, are progressing well. The Portola Valley Station should be uh, wrapping up next month. Uh, we, I think the crews finally got their kitchen back this week. So happy about that. They finally have bathrooms and kitchens back in the firehouse. So they'll be happy about that. Once we get the, uh, the um, site work all done, we'll be 
we'll be a lot happier and uh, be able to have most of our fire station back. So that's going great. Station seven, we're still anticipating um, November of this year to be completed. So that's going well. And then, yeah, as far as the changes in the organization, we're trying to hire two firefighter, two new firefighter paramedics at this time. They're going through background processes now. And we're looking at uh, uh, a battalion chief and a, and a captain's test here in the fall. So that's kind of all I have for the, the fire side. I wanted to touch on Zone Haven. The other day I learned in the meeting that, uh, and I noticed in the evacuation policy, it, it references Zone Haven quite a bit. We might want to put in there that um, Zone Haven also changed their name to Genesis. So they got bought by a company called Genesis. They're still using the tag as Zone Haven because I can't give that up because it's already out there. But um, I think maybe in a parentheses or somewhere in there, we should have it say something about Genesis. Um, also, they did come out with an app now. So there is an app available. If you go to the app store or whatever, it's, uh, it's called Genesis. You can download the app, you pull it up, and it'll show you exactly what zone you're in right now. It'll show a map of that zone and just based on your locations, depending on how you set up your settings. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll tell you the zone you're in and the status of that zone right away. So it's pretty neat. I, I just downloaded it the other day. I haven't had a lot of time to spend you know, utilizing it yet, but it's definitely something you guys should, uh, should promote out there as a group. That's all I have for now. Great, any questions for Tom? What's the status of um, replacing Don Bullard? Yeah, so uh, we're actually going to be going through that process. We uh, actually just closed our our uh, application process. We're going to do an internal. Um, so we're actually going to talk to as as far as people being back from vacation today. Um, reach out to HR and and get a game plan to schedule our, our interviews. So uh, Don hasn't officially put in his papers yet, but he, he tells us he's going to retire by the end of the year. So we'll have somebody in place, probably we're thinking about October to start that transition and uh, have a new fire marshal in place by the first of the year. Great. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Selena. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be really short because um, due to being away at the burn survivor camp I do every year, COVID and the CERT conference, I was pretty much gone last month. So um, the only thing I really want to touch on is we postponed the SMC alert um, test due to uh, me being unable to attend communication stay. I heard it went really well, um, but uh, I, I'm still working with uh, the county to work on a template for messaging. So uh, we're going to be figuring out the date for the test coming up here soon. Um, and then as well, I just wanted to send a huge, huge thank you to Jerry Sheffrin, Lynn Eisberg, as well as Cam McCowan, who um, helped uh, volunteer their time for the CERT International Conference. We had 800 attendees, I believe. And it was, my brain is so full of ideas, not just for the CERT side, but for the ready side. So it was really great. And I'll have more to report um, on that next month. So that's all I have. I actually, I want to thank Selena for helping a lot in the background for communications day with the banners uh, and, the, and the flyer. So thank you. And also to Kari, who was also very helpful at the town to get it on the website and to get it out. So thank you. No problem. Selena, it's Vic. Uh, quick question. I've got a couple of neighborhood groups that have really expressed an interest to gather uh, over the next several weeks. I think you're aware of one maybe in Shawnee Pass. I assume that to the extent you can schedule it, you're still available, you or someone from your office available to come and speak at those groups and give them some of the tools and encouragement they need to move forward. Is that correct? Uh, you are absolutely correct. I am available. Okay. And they've been in contact with you? Is that yeah. good? Yeah. Okay. I'm just responding to emails. Today is my first day back officially. <laughs> okay, okay. Good. They've invited me to also par uh, participate, and I, I would hope to be there to support that effort as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thank you, Selena. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to a discussion of the evacuation plan. Um, as most of you know, we had a special meeting on the 13th of June 
where we took uh, public comment, uh, written comment uh, on the evacuation plan as written. We got uh, primarily positive comments, particularly from Woodside Fire, from the uh, County Department of Emergency Management and several residents um, on the evacuation plan. We took comments, we had several written comments, some adjustments, we had some TBDs on the plan. Uh, we took all of those into account, adjusted uh, the evacuation plan, particularly Rob and Randy, their expertise in getting all that in, in what we consider to be a final form of the evacuation plan. And we're hopefully at, at this meeting, we're gonna have some comments and see if we can uh, send it on to the town council for approval. One of the things to recognize that this is going to be probably a living document, uh, may need revision as much as every year. Uh, as more information becomes available, we really want to do that. Um, make sure that it is consistent with what we know and what we learn. And one of the primary things is that uh, we're going to work with the Geologic Safety Committee. They have some great interest in, in putting in a chapter in the evacuation plan about uh, coincident and, and concurrent events where, where you have an earthquake and then you have a fire. What do you do? How do you deal with those kinds of things? And uh, so I know Rob has already had some conversations with members of the Geologic Safety Committee about how we attack that. And, and one of the things we're gonna do is look at other plans that are out there. So that's gonna take a while to develop a chapter. Um, so we will put that in as, you know, as that gets, de gets developed. So first of all, I'm gonna to turn to the committee. Do we have any comments, thoughts on the evacuation plan? But as we were coming into this meeting this morning, I told Rob, the only place in the whole document that talks about uh, ham radials is with regard to the um, animals. It's the only place that says setting up a ham uh, setup and so forth. I would think that people are just as important as anim animals and would have thought that ham uh, operation setup and so forth would be important for, for people as well. Um. I think my quick comment there, Bud, is that we wrote this primarily as a document for the residents to see. And so we have to think about how you get the information out to residents. And even though we have a high percentage of people in Portola Valley that are hands, to the general populace, the ham radio isn't gonna do a whole lot. We have to rely on primarily SMC alerts, uh, AM radio as a backup, and in the worst case, the old high low from, from the sheriff's department. So maybe in the next revision, we can put something in about emergency. But one of the things you have to remember from the communication standpoint, if, if they're calling for an evacuation, you may not have time to set up like the emergency communications trailer or we may have to set it up somewhere remotely. Any other comments, questions from the committee? Okay, let's go out to the wide audience. Oh, Craig. Is this plan um, for the residents? Like this is just a document for residents to read or are you assuming that, <coughs> excuse me, that this is gonna be an evacuation plan that the town's gonna to adopt? I, I assume the latter, but you seem to imply maybe the former. No, it's a plan that we, we would like the town to adopt. Okay, and and do you guys have a sense for the process this is gonna go through or are you, you gonna send it to the council and then we're going to sort of think about the process of how to get it adopted? Uh, our plan is to send it to the town council for their review and adopt. Okay, yeah, my guess is it's gotta go, you know, it would go to staff and, and get feedback and stuff. So I'm, my guess is there's another loop in here, but okay, so. So you just you're going to submit it to the council, um, and then we'll figure out how to get it sort of formally adopted. That's correct. Okay, Bob, is that what? If you guys need help, I mean, we, this was a plan that was heavily uh, inside fire worked very very hard on this, <clears throat> as well as the uh, the county dam. Uh, that was a process that Jeremy set up 
uh, you know, before he left. Uh, I believe Howard has had a chance to look at it. And so, um, and uh, in, the la in the previous draft, the DIM heavily suggested some things which have all been included. The DIM yes. heavily supported it. Um, and Woodside Fire heavily supported it. They think it's the right thing uh, for the town to have. Uh, but clearly, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it yourself, but clearly what's stated in that is that uh, it's the planning that really is important. And you can see the Woodside Fire has just gone through uh, you know, a tabletop. And so it's, it's the best thing to try to get out before fire season starts this year uh, so that people know what they should be doing. Um, we've drug our, our feet a long time on this one. And um, if the council can't do anything on this, then maybe us citizens should publish this as recommendations for town residents. But, you know, I think it's time to get off the pot and, and do something. Sure. No, I, I, so I, I have read it, but I haven't commented on it because Dale asked me as a liaison not to do that. So okay. I'm going to, you know, when it gets to the council, um, I guess what I'm trying to understand and, and help clarify is when it comes to the council and there are um, people are going to make comments, there's going to probably be requests for revision. Do you guys expect it to come back to you for changes? Do you think staff's going to make the changes? I'm just, I just want to try to make sure I understand the process because I agree with you. I mean, I think you guys have written a great document and I want to make sure we get it in place. So I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, how to do that. Well, you know, let's compare it to the safety room. Uh, you asked the committees to make comments on the safety room. And we worked hard on that. We gave it to you, and I have no idea where it is now. Well, that no, so no. staff is working on the safety element. That's okay, so, well. you know, uh, if, we, if we have a fire this year, what do you want your residents? You you represent us, right? We're absolutely, your residents, right? What do you want your residents to know? And and that actually was the genesis of the question, which is, do we want to do we want to start this as information? I mean, it. It reads as an official, like here's our evacuation plan for the town, which I think was your intent, right? If Correct. it is, then that's, you're right. That feels to me like that probably follows the same kind of process that the safety element follows in terms of its review and, and updates. Um, if we're just trying to get something out to residents, there's certainly a section in there. It's pretty specific for residents and, and maybe that gets sent out as a tip and maybe it gets sent out, you know, soon. Well, Selena has set that out, but the other information of how the process works so the residents know in conjunction with Woodside Fire and with the, the dam, what process actually happened. Um, that's something that that is an agreement between the town, uh, the agencies, the sheriff, et cetera, and the residents. So it's not just for the residents, it's for everybody, but I think it would be very important that the residents at least hear this if the town is going to take a long period of time to try to figure out what to do with this. Yeah, I guess I was separating out the information that residents can act on versus the formal adoption of a plan for the town, which, which I think is the thing you're speaking to. So, so that was what I, yeah, I was just trying to sort of understand the, the two. Okay. So, I have thanks. a question about process. I'm, I'm just looking at parallels in the past. I, I remember the process usually is the committee produces and puts in the, the, the brain work. And, and then there is a presentation to the town council at the town council meeting. The town council asks a number of questions and then the town council votes to adapt. Isn't that the process? Yeah, I think what we need to find out here, and I don't know the answer, um, is I think we need to find out whether the evacuation plan is part of the safety element um, if it is, then it's adopted as, okay, well, I, I actually think it might be. I think it might be part of the safety element. So that's what I'm, I, again, I've sort of stayed out of the details until it gets to council um, at, at Dale's request of sort of being less hands-on as a liaison. So um, I'm happy when it gets there. I'm, I'm trying to make sure when it gets to the council, it just doesn't get there and the council goes, what do we do with this? So that's why I was trying to ask to make sure that we give this some thought so no. that when it gets to the council, we can make sure that we move it forward and get the right result. Let me just finish this. So, so Ray, uh, excuse me, um, uh, Rob, uh, are you? Are we on the agenda to present this? 
for the town council because that has to happen. Otherwise, nothing ever happens in town. I think that's why this is here today. Is that we have to ask that this is the yeah, yeah. No, the I agenda understand. item is to basically the committee is going to approve, and then that would be the next step. Right. Yeah. So we approve, and then it needs to go on the on the on, and then you know you do a few power PowerPoint slides. You know, I mean, we have done it at, at the at the other fire committee. It's pretty simple. Right. I, I guess my concern is realistically, it probably gets on the council agenda in September. And if we're talking fire season, which is Rob's concern, which I think is a legitimate concern, then I think we ought to think about what other messaging we want to get out. And if you think Selena's messaging is enough, then that's fine. But um, we've got to we send this out to everybody as a draft. If this committee approves it, we're going to send it out to the residents as it is. Um, yeah, I think you need to go through the town manager to do that. I mean, certainly the committees aren't authorized to um, send out public documents on their own. So I think you can work with the town manager. I, I'm not trying to be an obstructionist here. I totally appreciate the work that's going into it. I want to make sure it gets done. And if we, you know, if we just muddle along, then it just seems like it's going to take longer. So that was my intent. Um, so it's not a priority. It couldn't be on the town, uh, on the, on the, uh, so the next town Earlier? council meeting is the 9th of August. Okay, that's too That late. meeting is full. Um, and then, no, I mean, I, I know it's, it's, I tr it's, it's full. I mean, maybe we can move something off. I mean, that might be possible. Um, there's not one, um, the meeting, the, the next August meeting after that, there isn't, it's, it's canceled. So that's September. I mean. <laughs> or you have a special town council meeting for that. That has happened in the past. Yes, and and you can you know you can talk with the town manager, um, and then you know they can talk with the mayor, um, and see if we can set something up. So, I mean, we used to have these fifth Wednesday, you know, I that that and that that would have been you know the, the perfect kind of time to do this stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I now that I'm a council member, I'm realizing more the bureaucracy side of this of sort of what it takes to move this stuff forward and it's much slower than any of us like it's painfully slow so so but anyway so uh, craig it's vic uh, hi, vic. <laughs> uh, hi um and and i i first of all i want to compliment all the people that worked on this plan it is an impressive product uh it really yep. is yep. and i know you share what i'm about to say which is uh we can't uh, give a high enough priority to the importance of implementing this plan uh, and I, I, for one member of this committee, want to really urge that we ask the town council to do something, if necessary, extraordinary, whether it's to get this as an extra item on the next agenda or to, or to hold a, a special town council meeting to move this forward. I just think it would be absolutely inexcusable uh, facing what we are in terms of the uh, oncoming uh, uh, fire season to not take this excellent product and get it moving. So. I just want to convey that as my own personal view, and I want to encourage us as a committee to send this to the town council, get it on the agenda, uh, and encourage them to give this a very special priority. Yeah, I, I, I think when you guys pass your motion, I think you can add that into the motion, um, and then it, it will it will move from there. So, uh, okay, so I have, I have a number of comments and uh, around this and. Uh, we discussed this in, in our subcommittee in terms of the urgency of this. And I initially wasn't convinced that it was super urgent to get approved by the council, but, I, but Rob, I think you convinced me that that is actually the best path and that will have a big impact in terms of residents paying attention to it. And, and looking. I've asked many of these same questions that you've asked of, of Rob throughout this and, and having gotten involved in initially not intending to spend so much time <laughs> document wrangling and, Yep. using um, with my staff and making a lot of personal sacrifices to to get this done because of fire season I, I i'd like to make the case that an approval by the council would get many more eyeballs on it and i've asked the same question like is this a plan is this an information doc who is this for is it for residents is it for the agencies which i fired it for them in terms of documenting us and it's it's really an amalgamation doc it's a collection of a lot of different things and, and aspects of it are targeting different audiences. And I think, but I think that's a strength of the document and it's, it's collecting a lot of, a lot of um, different information together. 
And then a big part of what we did as the subcommittee was organize it to document in such a way. It's a Google document so that it could be edited, added to. And so I would recommend that as we consider for our resolution of passing on, emphasizing that the council can clarify in, in their approval of it, how they see the document. And I think that could be a path towards resolving any ambiguity in terms of, of um, you know, it's, it, is there something in here to implement? Are there, are, is this document making obligations of the town, the town council or the, or the staff? So the, even a half page resolution is, in, you know, could, could help clarify that. And, and because, you know, you mentioned it is a great document, we want to get eyeballs on that because that could right. potentially save lives if there is a fire. Yeah, so, well, I guess one thing I'm wondering, um, kind of to Dale's point, is, I mean, what if we just get approval to put it out there to the public as a draft? Right. It's, it's already in, in the public record. And that, that well, it's in the public point. record, but I mean, can we get permission to put it on social media, for instance? Can we put it on PV Forum to get more eyeballs on it? Because if our goal is to get eyeballs on it, which I, I hear you, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, then, I mean, we do have a process for committees getting stuff on social media, but maybe that's where we should start because, I mean, we can bring it to a council meeting. The committee can do a presentation. I sit in council meetings, you know, we get a certain number of people there, but, you know, in some ways it's the same group of people. Um, whereas a PV forum um, and, and there are other avenues, you know, social media avenues that maybe we can get more eyeballs on. It. So, I mean, I, I'm happy to, to try to do both. I just don't want us to have unrealistic expectations. So um, if you guys, you know, if you guys want to make a proposal to, you know, put it on PV forum, then let's give that to town manager. We can get, you know, so you can get it approved. I don't imagine it wouldn't get approved, but it, I'm just one council member. So. so I think what's important, Craig, to realize here is that in this document, which has been edited by both the fire and uh, San Mateo County, there are some statements here, which are sort of hard fact realities. They're gonna follow and they want the residents to understand, but it is an agreement among all the, the responsible agencies that this is what's gonna happen. And if we want to change it or improve it, that we need to do that. And so I don't think that we can just put it on the forum as some fluffy document. This is something that the town council has to say, okay, this is reality. We know that all of these agencies have worked very hard on it. I mean, there probably have been a hundred hours by the dim working on this. Okay, that we recognize this and this is what our plan is now. And if they want changes to it, then let's get the, the feedback changes and we will make those as Rev 2 and Rev 3 and Rev 4, okay? But so, I so I feel like we're talking two separate things. One is, I heard you say, it's really important to get it to the public ASAP. So there's that piece, okay. And then, no. well, okay, but so there's that piece. And then there's the other piece, which is a formal set of agreements with different agencies. Um, and, and realistically, I don't think that's gonna happen before September. The so, agencies have already made. But the council hasn't, and the council will need to review this and it will go through staff. It's gonna be a longer process. Okay. So, so that's what I'm saying is it, it feels like if we can do both, um, we can get the benefit of getting it out to the public, but we also can get it moving. And I think making a request that it be expedited is a reasonable request. Is the council willing to promote this themselves? saying that they have not yet gone through it and approved it formally, but they want the public to be aware of this. Marianne, do you have any comment on that? Actually, I, I feel, I've been around for a long time. I'm sorry to say this. I think the process, the right process to do this is not the PV forum and have 100,000 people now say, I want to change there because they're, they're not the experts. So I think the process is to approve this today and then to get with a priority on the council's agenda to make a presentation so that the council can see it, read it, ask questions, and then come to a decision. We want it, we don't want it. That's the process. And then after that, we can decide if maybe experts of, experts of it should go on the forum or not. 
I think that's pretty irrelevant at the moment. At the moment, this is important that we approve it. It goes to the council and the council gives us a feedback. Yes, this is something we adopt or no, we're throwing it in the trash. But to say it just simply as that. Yeah, I, I, well, I agree, Mary, and I, mean, I think in, in our resolution, we should, we should propose that we expedite presenting this to the council and then the subcommittee can, can work on that presentation to, to try to convince the council to approve this expeditiously um, because of impending fire season. And, and I, would, I would recommend that we do that as our, as our resolution here in, in passing it through the EPC. And we'd love, we'd love your support in, in, in drafting that. I, you know, I think the subcommittee at this point would very much welcome your you know, personal feedback and, and sort of your deep experience in the town on safety issues. And also in, in strategizing how to, to get this uh, approved by the council quicker, because I think the impact in terms of number of residents that will pay attention to this and the way that this document could, you know, for example, get to the neighborhood groups that are starting to, that are that are forming. And Bud mentioned this last time. You know, we we want to follow up on this as well and say, okay, now with this with this document in place, what are what are further priorities that that can have impacts such such as you know the, the top ones on my list are outreach around school evacuation and shelter place issues yeah. and uh, communication issues. Residents have brought that up. Uh, uh, Betsy Morgenthal brought that up at, at communication day. Uh, yeah, great. No, happy neighborhood, neighborhood plan. So. Yeah, no, happy happy to help. Uh, do we have any other public comment out there in? In the audience. Uh, Betsy, I see your hand up. Yes, um, thank you. This is my first time attending your committee's uh, meeting and it's quite an important one. Um, I'm glad to be here and applaud your incredible work. Um, I also want to uh, voice um, support for, for the idea that, that Craig Taylor's now surfaced to post this in advance of its being approved to post it to the Portola Valley Town News update that Carrie Chin um, blasts to residents. I think it would be quite powerful, in fact, if it were associated with a good faith measure by the town council to actually announce um, that they have assigned a date at which, so that the town would, would know that this was coming before the town and when it was coming before the town council so that <clears throat> the date that you've been talking about can be more clear because I think that a lot of us um, have been waiting in the wings for the safety element to rise to a level of import. It feels like it's here. It feels very important to get concrete assurances from the town council at this moment. <clears throat> and regarding that, I wanted clarification because I heard I was a bit confused, in fact, when I heard that the next town council meeting would be August the 9th. Perhaps I misheard that because I expected that the next town council meeting was July 12th and another one at the July 26th. So I'm not sure what to make of that. So the, the next council meeting, the agenda is already out. So you couldn't get it on that one. The later July meeting is canceled. So August 9th is the next one. Uh, thank you for the clarification. Um, all right, former point still still stands, and and thank you again for the tremendous work that went into this document. Thank you, Betsy. Any other comments from the public? Okay, then I'm going to bring it back to committee here. I believe what I am hearing, is Craig. I believe what I'm hearing from this committee is that we wish to pass this document. We wish to ask the town council to expeditiously, as soon as possible, set a meeting to discuss and approve, or at least discuss the, this evacuation plan. And perhaps in concert with that meeting, putting this document on the town update Carrie sends out because if we put this out as a draft on that town update that calls attention to it, it's it out in the public uh, for comment. But modify that that the uh, meeting of the town council should be before September. 
I, I think that's a great idea to put it on the town update. I hadn't really considered that. I, I, I would actually request that we do that as a part of our committee approving it rather than gate that by the town council setting a date. Um, and it's, it's already we been do published. That, Howard? Can we do that, Howard? Can we put approval of the evacuation plan in the town update and have Carrie submit that so people see that? We can request it. Okay, so okay. well, that's that's part of the motion too. Is that okay, Rob? No, no I, with all due respect, you know, uh, people. I think that we can promote. It's already out on the town website if people want to want to read it. But with all due respect, I think the town council has to look at this, and they have to agree or disagree with what we've checked. That this is a frank, honest document. There's nothing in it that I think is not what is really going to happen right now. And I think the town council needs to say it's a frank, honest document or not. And I, I think it would be a big mistake to put it out there without them having gone through it. Uh, no, that's just my opinion, Randy. Okay. So, Rob, I understand what you're saying. And I, I'm totally sympathetic to the concern that from the top, getting it from the top, uh, and the endorsement of the town council is so important. But I got to tell you, there's good work in this plan. And if the process that Craig is describing to us uh, is such that it's going to delay it uh, months, if not uh, weeks, for sure, I, I really feel the value of getting the, the proposed thoughtful plan out to the public to pick up what they can from this to address the anxiety that's out there about the absence of an evacuation plan far outweighs uh, the benefit of waiting till we get to the approval of the town council, given the procedural reality. So I, for one day, would move that we proceed uh, with this expeditiously to appropriately publicize this proposed plan with the understanding the town council is going to act on it and that we simultaneously work as expeditiously as possible to get this on the next town council agenda. Because uh, I think it has real value as it is to get out to the community. Well, I, we've worked very hard on this, Vic, and I would like to see this get out. Uh, I just, and I'm not opposed with people seeing it. I just want people to understand that this has not been approved by the town council. And so maybe we should uh, change it to back to the draft. I think it's still listed as draft. Okay. Uh, actually, the one that went out said this. It's the one I, I copied off of the website. Okay. So on the website right now, I don't know how it got out there without the redraft in it. It doesn't have, doesn't have draft? Pardon me? What does it say on the website? It's it says Town of Portola Valley Evacuation Plan Rev 1.0 July 2023. No, it has to say draft. It has to say draft. It says draft, draft in the, the. It says draft in the footer. Just. Uh, just go to the calendar. When you say, yeah. I, I have it open from the calendar. And what does it say, Randy? It says draft in the footer, but not in the title of the document. Okay, it's yeah. draft in the footer, but not in the title. Yeah, that's what is attached to the. Yeah. So okay, it needs to say draft. It, it, draft, it, draft, it, draft. It's yeah, said, draft. It has to say draft. Yeah. Okay. If. if so could we change the proposal to be uh, we, one, we officially put this to the town council. We want this, uh, as Marianne said, we want a date when this can be discussed. We feel it's a priority to be discussed. And two, we will change the title of this to say draft mm -hmm. and that we will put it out on. It would be nice. It would be nice if it could go through the town uh, coming out from the town. So can we give this to Howard and, and ask that Howard do something with it? Can you do that, Howard? Uh, let's break it into two motions. Yes. Thank yeah. I, I would like I would like a motion to send this to the town council for expeditious review and approval. Period. I think we have to approve first. Oh yeah, fine, fine. that's our motion. <laughs> That's Fine, our motion. That's the, okay. motion. that's the first motion. So can someone make that motion? I'll make second? the motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
So that's approved. Good so work, everyone. Send, nice job. So we're going to send this to the town council and ask them for expeditious approval of the evacuation site. Number two, another motion, and we can also discuss. Do we ask that the draft evacuation plan be placed into the town update? I think it comes out weekly. So it gets to the residents with the caveat that it is a draft and it will be reviewed by the town council. Is that what is that what people would yeah. like? And I would say it, it, a note, you know, it's a one-liner every week until the town council meeting. It's not just a one-time thing. That way people might miss it. I don't read it every week, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then when we know that the date on town council, that is also listed in the- Yeah, exactly. Beginning. Well, I think we need a third motion where, where we talk about that, we, that this is going to go on the agenda and we'll make a presentation to the town council for approval. Well, that's part of the first. Yes, yeah, that's part of the first. Oh, if we, if we can get it on the town council's agenda, we will make it. Easier. And and even even in advance of that, I I, mean, I would ask staff, council, or any other committees if they find anything in this that's incorrect, um, to please get us that get us that criticism as soon as possible. And if you know additions and and expansions. If, if people again feel that those are critically important, we'd, we'd, we'd like those as well. Um, so we'd, we'd like to continue to get that feedback even as we approve this version of it. And in terms of the, the timing, I mean, one of the drivers I, I, I believe should be school resuming and the need for school evacuation plans and communication of those plans, I think is critical. The fact that our schools are buried deep in Portola Valley and we under an evacuation order and the most stringent emergency, we're unable to get buses in, presents us with additional challenges and potentially the need to shelter in place. And that most parents are not aware of. And that, that's why I got involved in this evacuation work. It wasn't to wrangle this document, but this document sets us up to do more real work that, that, that can have an important impact in an emergency. Uh, this, this, that is what I've been thinking about since Rob mentioned this to me when I first made it. I, I think having the town council approve this document with whatever caveats, whatever additional information under whatever circumstances, then sets us up to do that. So there, there is an ancillary document that will be coming out from the schools. The schools, that's in process with the schools. It will happen. Uh, as the schools start again this year, Don Bullard will be doing that presentation with Selena and the uh, the school the school uh, uh, the school people. But can we go back to the second proposal yep. just for a minute? Um, can you restate it, please? The committee recommend that the draft evacuation plan be placed in the town update that Terry Chin sends out weekly. For residents review. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we have our second one. So we're going to get it out there. We're going to ask the town council for expeditious review. Can I mention that it was approved by the EPC? That's that's, oh, yeah. that's yeah. kind of the announcement. I will do that. I will you know, send this off. It's, it's, it's still a question to Howard. Can you do that? Yep. Approved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Has been sent to town council for review. I'll work with Carrie on the on the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
we want to we want to depoliticize the some of the issues around safety and particularly the committees. And if 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 a committee approves something like this, it you know I I, I read a lot of those announcements. It it would be you know completely in line with 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 what's normally announced in in the town weekly update. And so I don't I don't think. I would discourage the, the, the town staff from trying to massage our approval and how we're looking to present our actions as a committee. They would be just, they would just be presenting what we approve, not, not changing it. Exactly. They so. can't. We're, we're, just, we're just submitting what we approve. Yeah, I just want to be clear. We're not, I don't, I don't want to come across as masking anything. It's not yeah. masking anything. What I meant is, is, for our process to be simple, yeah. you know, on the yeah. newsletter, when someone looks at something, they don't like, they don't typically, we try to do it like one sentence, not multiple sentences. Yeah. And it's something like, hey, look, you know, this is what, something that the EPC is working on, a draft evacuation plan. You could find it here. That, that's what I meant. No, okay, but uh, it should say we approve it. Yeah, it's, it's not, not working. Not, yeah. We approved it. <laughs> that's right. We approved it. It's not working. All right. We've approved it. That's different. So, so it's a draft because the town hasn't adopted it, but about, we have approved it. Yeah, it's. Yes. it's I'll, I'll work with Howard. And yeah, carry on yeah. On that. I, I, all I'm saying is just that the simpler it is to when we reach out and the less words it is, the better. And and and, and with all the approvals and stuff, there there may be when you start mentioning approvals because the county council hasn't approved it yet, there may be. It may be inviting comments because you know anytime when we put something out there, there's always pluses and minuses on comments. But the less words you use, and it's and once again, it's just pointing out the link that's a, it actually exists on the web already. Thank you. And that and that essentially the the, the gist is is really just to get in, the bottom line is to get the information out so that people know what's out there. But, yeah. I have to leave. Is there anything else we need to approve? No. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip over the next two because Jerry's not here. Do we have anybody on the subcommittee reports? Ray, anything important you need to bring up? Uh, nothing. Well, June 24th, we had our safety and communications day. And uh, on one hand, radio guys all showed up a lot. Thanks. On the other hand, nobody from the town showed up. The Woodside. Fire department sent three firemen by early. WTV cert was unrepresented with no nothing standing. I understand Selena had COVID or whatever, but nobody showed up. So I'm not sure of the merit or the value of doing this going forward. It just wasn't important. And we put up banners, we did advertising, we did all the stuff, but nobody came, generally speaking. And it was fun, but it wasn't. It didn't, it didn't fulfill the mission that we were on. So I'm not sure it's worth it. With slight correction. Betsy Betsy did come and had some good feedback. Oh, okay. But I I missed her. I, I, I concur that this I mean there was this you know, effort needs year, more attention. Last year sort of had a whole booth and handing stuff out and selling radios. It was very you know, fire department was very early in the truck. It was different. Uh, it was support, community support. But nobody from the town came by. The San Mateo Office of Emergency Services sent their leader down. He, he came and talked to us for a while. Otherwise, anyway, so, you know, I think it's worth um, pondering whether we do it again. I, can I make a comment? This is Selena. <laughs> um, yeah, so unfortunately, yeah, we didn't have representation from Sir already, but I think it's a valuable event. I feel like if we are going to, going to call it communications and uh um forgot what the exact term but I, I feel safety safety day then we should really try to add in um um uh, uh items about safety right so I was trying to think of what would be great in the future um there was a suggestion given to me to have a spot where people can learn you know uh down and dirty CPR right hands only CPR you know, we could bring the fire extinguisher prop there. Like there are things that we can bring. And I, I'm totally, um, I'm, I am totally down to do it basically, uh, and create it actually as a communications and safety day so that, you know, we draw people there, 
um, not just with the intent of uh, learning about, you know, Radio Day, but so they can get something more out of it. So Ray, yeah, this year may not have been how it was in the past, but I do feel it's important and it's a valuable opportunity for us. Okay. I, I think we will discuss this more as the year year moves on. Be fine. I was I was actually disappointed in the town turnout. But we we had more advertising this year, I think, we than ever we, we have ever had. I mean, Mary Ann and Carrie, we got banners out and flyers. And yeah, you know, to me, it's it's less about we didn't do everything we could have done, and certainly there's a lot we could do. And we, I think the title is correct. We didn't change it from last year. Right? No, but we just. I mean, last year we probably had 50 or 60 people come here. I think we had five or six, yeah, maybe. So uh, it's, just, it's a statement about the town interest in this stuff. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm not a psychologist, a psychologist, a psychiatrist. So. <laughs> sure. I don't think the people care about this. Okay, it appeared to not, not to be a lack of support on our part, but a lack of interest. And so we need to. We need to think about that. Okay. Well, some people may have come to the the wildfire fair and then, and then you know, so. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. And with that, uh, so motion to adjourn. Second. One favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you all in the audience for attending. We appreciate it. Well, Vic.